Hi beauties and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a top five video in my top five series. Today we're going to talk about loose powders. So if you'd like to find out more, then just keep watching. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for joining me for today's video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on your post notifications. That way you won't miss any of my uploads. Guys, it's so funny. I'm such a creature of habit. Today I decided to flip my hair the other way. Just, just a simple flip. So the flipping of my hair has just got me all mixed up today. Girl's not that serious. <laughs> Girl. So this is my first top five video of the year. And it's been a while since I filmed one. I wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about next. So it just took me a while. So I finally decided to talk about my favorite powders. So we're gonna talk about that today. I wanna start off with an honorable mention. I don't have it with me today as well as the fact that the formula has changed on this powder and it may be just as good as previously but i don't have the new formula i have the old formula so i decided not to put it on the list also the powder i'm talking about is the chanel powder and i have it in shade 40 and it's not translucent it is a deeper shade and it's a powder that i use kind of around the perimeter of my face and i don't actually use it in the center of my face and i just love how it airbrushes my skin and how beautiful that powder is it really is one of my favorite powders lately i've been eliminating an extra step when i wear that powder i have to wear like a different powder in the center of my face and then i put that powder on second so often times now i just haven't been using it as much because that means i have to wear two powders and i just don't want to add an extra step in my makeup routine so it is really one of my favorite powders it is gorgeous at least the previous formula was I'm sure it's not that different now. I want to believe that the reason they changed it was to remove talc from the powder and that's how they changed the formula but it's just a gorgeous powder and it gives you the most beautiful complexion. It lasts forever. It's a very large container worth every penny of it. It is a Chanel powder and I will repurchase that over and over again even with the new formula. So when I empty this one I will buy the new formula. So it really should be in my top five, but because it's not translucent and it's not the new formula, I decided to leave it off the list. But I wanted to start with that powder. I love that powder. I'm gonna talk about my current favorite face powders and I'm not gonna talk about them in any particular order. And these shouldn't really be that big of a surprise to you guys if you've been watching me for a while. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first powder that I want to talk about is this Dermablend powder. And the one that I have with me right now is the Illuminating Banana Powder. This one isn't my favorite. That's why it's still full. But I really like the Translucent Powder. I just don't have that one with me. I actually emptied it a little while ago and haven't had a chance to repurchase it because I have several powders right now that I want to empty before buying it again. I purchased my Dermablend powder from Ulta during a 21 Days of Beauty some time ago. On Ulta's website, it says that the Dermablend Loose Setting Powder is the ultimate step to lock in makeup for up to 16 hours of smudge and transfer resistant wear and mattify complexion. It says it's weightless, I would agree. It's sheer translucent, I would agree. It can be used for baking, setting, or finishing. It says available in cool beige shade for enhancing cooler undertones and warm saffron. This particular shade is the Illuminating Banana Powder. On Ulta's website, they don't even sell this one anymore, so it might not have been anybody's favorite. Disregard the fact that this one is the Illuminating Banana Powder. I really like the original, which is like a white color. This particular powder is so fine. It's super finely milled. It just wears beautifully. And at first when I tried it, 
I don't think I fell in love with it initially. I went back to the Derma Blend powder when I was working on emptying powders and fell in love with this powder. It really does lock in my makeup and give me a very airbrushed complexion. It extends the wear of my makeup so it sets beautifully. It doesn't like add lines and creases to my face. It doesn't feel like you have on a heavy powder. It locks in your makeup and it's gorgeous. I actually think that this will be a good powder for people who don't really like powder. It does give you that long wear, but it's really lightweight. So you could really just lightly dust it all over your face and not feel like you have applied heavy powder and it's gonna give you a gorgeous finish. The other thing I like about it is it's only $29 and I think that that's pretty affordable for a powder. I really, really love the Derma Blend powder. I have emptied it, would repurchase it again, just haven't had to, but I really love that powder. So the Derma Blend Loose Powder in the original shade is one of my top five powders. This is powder is probably America's favorite translucent powder, and that is the Laura Mercier. This one is really on empty and I think I have another one that's almost on empty so just to give you guys like a comparison the Laura Mercier powder is $43 so more expensive for sure what I really like about this powder is it comes in a variety of shades so did the Derma Blend there were a couple of additional shades but this one does come in some more shades you have like a honey shade which is kind of like banana but it is a little deeper I have purchased that one before and one of my favorites is this medium deep but it is similar to my issue with the Chanel powder it is another step so I oftentimes will skip um, this powder and it's you can't quite tell but it is a darker powder but sometimes I was just getting to the point where I would skip applying this powder because it was an additional step but it is so beautiful and I can tell a significant difference in my makeup look when I use this particular powder so love 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 that whenever I do use it I love that but there is definitely something very special about the Laura Mercier powder and it does come in a mini if you don't want to spend like a ton of money on this powder. It's a loose powder. It gives you long wear. It is oil free. It gives you a matte finish and it says it's best for oily combo and normal skin. So dry skin girls might not want to use this but I think this is sort of a best all around powder for me. So it says that this one gives you 24 hour shine control. It has vitamin C and E powders, powerful antioxidants, uh, botanical blurring powder. I would agree it's silky, finely milled. It's an award winning powder and it's going to give you long lasting wear which I've mentioned and reduce shine and all of those things. And it also does not give you flashback in photos. So I honestly do think the Laura Mercier powder is worth the hype. If for some reason you can't wear this powder and you don't like it for some reason, hopefully one of the others might be something that you will enjoy. But this powder is just beautiful to me. It isn't super white. Like the Derma Blend powder has a whiter look. It does go on the face translucent, but it looks white in the container. Whereas this almost has this kind of off-white look which to me makes it much better for various skin tones so if you do have a medium skin tone or if you are lighter you should still be able to wear this powder if this is too light for you and you have deeper skin then you can go with the medium deep you just have options you can also use honey if you enjoy that one my favorite is still the regular translucent powder it's just the best all-around powder there was a time when i would film and i could tell a difference if I wasn't wearing this powder. Now some of these others are giving it a run for its money and they are performing just as well. But there was a time when I could tell a distinct difference in my makeup look, especially on camera, when I wasn't wearing this Laura Mercier powder. So I have probably purchased, of course, more of this powder than any other powder ever in my life. Like I, I'm sure I've gone through five or six of these. <laughs> and when you think about being a YouTuber and the amount of powder that I own, the fact that I keep reaching for this and keep repurchasing should tell you guys something. So if you've not tried it before, this is still the best powder ever. It's just really great. So love this. The powder that I'm wearing today is also 
a super big favorite of mine. When I originally purchased this powder, I also purchased the Fenty powder in Banana, I think was the shade. I was wearing the two of them simultaneously and kind of couldn't decide which one I liked more. I love them both. The Fenty seemed to really lock in your makeup really well, so I also love that powder. However, I have not emptied that powder. I've moved away from it. I go back to it, whereas this one I have emptied and repurchased. So ultimately, I think I enjoy this powder better. So the powder I'm referring to is the Huda or Huda. I always say Huda, but it may be Huda. <laughs> but the Huda Beauty Powder in Banana Bread is like one of my all-time favorite powders. I have repurchased this powder not too long ago, I think in a haul. I won't quite say half of this powder, but I've used quite a bit of it. It does have a light fragrance. So if you're a person that doesn't like fragrance, then you might want to steer away from this one. And the Fenty powder also has fragrance as well. But this, regardless of the fragrance of this powder, gives you the most gorgeous makeup look. I think that it has finished my makeup look really well. It sets beautifully. It sets all over beautifully, even though this is like banana bread. That's the shade I wear. And it's almost like the Laura Mercier in color. Like the Laura Mercier, like I said before, is translucent, but to me it is a creamy color. This one is kind of creamy as well. What I really like about the Huda powder is that it comes in a variety of shades. So let's read a little bit about it. Okay, and also again with pricing, this one is $35. And right now, quite a few of them are sold out on Sephora's website. And I hope that that doesn't mean anything in particular because <laughs> I always worry when things are sold out across the board, it makes you wonder, are you like, are you discontinuing the product? Is something changing? Because I see four that are sold out right now. The banana bread is not sold out. <laughs> The Heaven and Sugar Cookie, Cherry Blossom, which I have heard a lot of good things about that one. It's like a pink powder. I'm going to have to try that. Um, they have it in Cupcake. They have it in Pound Cake. Blondie. Cinnamon Bun. Coffee Cake. And then they have some minis as well. So that is what, oh my gosh, one oh one two three four five six seven eight nine. I don't know if I just said nine colors in case I missed one, but what I'm seeing here on my phone is nine shades of this powder. So definitely inclusive. That's probably one of the best things about this powder. This one is vegan. It is a loose formula. It offers medium coverage and a matte finish. Long lasting complexion. It airbrushes the skin. It blurs the appearance of pores and fine lines. I would agree. And it holds your makeup in place all day. And it also can be used for baking as well. It's extremely light and silky texture blends seamlessly into the skin, leaving it matte with a hint of sheen for a luminous finish that controls shine throughout the day. There's lots of other information that it says about the powder. Like my primer that I used today was a more luminous primer. I used my YSL primer that adds a little bit of shimmer. And I still think that I look pretty matte. I have like a little bit of a glow here in the center of my face from my brightening concealer, but my skin looks pretty matte after completing my makeup look today. And this one definitely locks in makeup. Like you are going to look beautiful when you wear this. I can't talk about them in order for a reason because I love them all. And depending on the day, I don't know which one is my number one. They're all very good. You just kind of have to test them out and see what works for you. But any of these will work, especially if you have like skin like myself. I am a combination skin girl and I have an oilier T-zone typically, but I'm kind of normal all over is typically what I deal with. And all of these powders work really well with my oily T-zone. So this one is awesome. This is one of my top five powders currently. So the next powder that I want to mention is this Givenchy powder and is the Prism Libre powder. On the bottom of this it says one mousseline pastel. You probably can't see it here but it has like 
purple, green, blue, and I don't know, lavender. All right, this one is the most expensive of the bunch. So this is a powder that you buy probably if you want to treat yourself. The Chanel one that I mentioned that was honorable mention is also kind of expensive. This one is $59 at Sephora. I feel like that price might have gone up. I don't know if I paid $59 for it, but it might have been that way. But you know, we're, we have inflation going on right now. One of the pluses of this, and lots of people like these powders too. This one has like 2.2K stars and they're almost five stars this one that i like to use is the original mousseline pastel it says it's for fair skin tones but i kind of see this one as the most translucent it seems to go on like translucent powder versus some of the others have color in them and i'm trying to kind of avoid the color i want to kind of brighten in the center when i use my powder but the number two says for fair to light skin tones it's satin blanc and then you have a number three violet rose maybe how you say that um, for light skin tones there is a number four for medium skin tones and a number five for medium deep skin tones and a number six for deep skin tones so you have six different powders but they all have these kind of colors and they serve different purposes so you have to kind of check out the website to see what the powders do. This one says it helps with redness, radiance, yellow and dark spots, and unifies and brightens skin tone. It's a loose powder. It has a radiant finish. It's good for pores, and it's good for dullness and uneven texture, and it has a matte finish as well. So it's a radiant matte powder. It's finely milled, and I would agree. It resists caking. It's designed to mattify blur and illuminate the complexion for a perfected makeup result. I see some other things like uh, vitamin E is in this powder as well, and it provides antioxidant protection. And it has a lot of other things on there about this powder. Whenever I've used this powder, immediately after applying this powder, I would always say, ooh, this one is giving my Laura Mercier a run for her money. Like every time I would apply this and think that. So it kind of is the one that makes me always feel like it's so much more beautiful than Laura Mercier. However, I also think that of all of these, it doesn't hold my t-zone together as well as the others like i think that sometimes and it's not all the time but i do think that sometimes my t-zone will become oilier depending on the concealer or the primer or that kind of thing by the end of the day like it's going to get me through most of my day just fine but I think that this one has more of a luminous finish and it did say it added that radiance it doesn't lock in the same as some of the others but it is still very very good so it just gives you this really gorgeous finish but it's not like my go-to powder for like mattifying and locking in makeup like all day but that being said this is the one for those of you who have been with me you know i live between two homes and this is the one that I have with me right now as my everyday powder that I grab most days. So even though I know that sometimes it may wear off a little bit by the end of the day, it's the one that I start with most days. It's gorgeous and it's one of those kind of treat yourself powders and it's going to give you the most gorgeous flawless finish but if you do have super oily skin i don't know that it's better than the others it doesn't say the best skin types for this powder but it says the fan favorite magic dust powder locks in makeup while reducing the appearance of pores and minimizing texture i would say that that's probably one of the reasons that i always think that the finish is so beautiful like i think it just makes my skin look so smooth and just look put together is gorgeous but I do think that it doesn't lock in makeup it's not giving me those numbers it's not saying 24 hour wear it's not saying 16 hour wear it's not giving you those types of figures so I don't know that that's what it's known for but it does give you a beautiful beautiful finish and it has the Givenchy symbol here it's just really pretty so love this powder it is the more expensive one of the bunch it's just something to treat yourself with if you were interested in it love this though the final powder that i want to mention is a very very special powder to me i love this powder 
And I think when it first came out, people talked about it a lot, but I don't necessarily hear people talking about it that much now, but it is a great face powder. And this is a powder by Nakia Joy Cosmetics, and it says Velvet Finishing Powder, but it is a loose powder. It smells like cake batter. Ugh, it is the best smelling powder ever. It smells like cake batter, so love that. You're going to like have the best experience applying it. This powder is special. This powder is made in Australia. Nakia Joy is a YouTuber and she lives in Australia. And I think this is probably one of the first products that she created was the powder. And then she has some other items on her website now. But this one says multi-use soft focus finishing powder that controls shine for up to 16 hours. It says our velvet finishing powder gives the skin a smooth matte finish whilst deeply conditioning with six power ingredients to improve skin condition and hydrate. Some of the things that it says it does, it minimizes pores, blurs, fine lines, and imperfections, locks in makeup, control shine, uh, controls excess oil production, um, it prevents makeup from creasing, caking, or separating, it's 100% translucent, lightly scented. It says with vanilla, but I think it smells like cake batter. And it's got all sorts of ingredients. It has vitamin A, E, sweet almond oil, aloe vera, coconut aminos, and green tea extract. It does contain talc if you're a person that doesn't want to use talc. The price of this is $38. One of the drawbacks with this powder is that it's made in Australia if you're a U.S. citizen. So when you order this, it may not get to you like in two days. But it has gotten better because the first time I ordered this, I felt like I had to wait a couple of weeks to get it. Whereas I have already re-upped on it, I think it came pretty quickly. I don't remember waiting as long for this powder to come the second time that I ordered it. Guys... And the Kia Joy has oily skin. She's created a powder for oily skinned girls. Anybody could use this, I guess, <laughs> but it really is gonna control shine. It really does keep your skin from producing oil. If I know I'm gonna have my makeup on a long time and I don't wanna have to really touch up a lot, this is the powder that I'm gonna use because I don't have to touch up very much when I use this. There are times when I go back to this powder that I wonder why do I bother with the other powders? <laughs> because it's so good. I don't know how much you get in this. Let me see, this looks like a smaller container. This is 0.7 ounces. So you don't get a full ounce, it's $38 and it's not in US. It's not something that is very convenient to purchase. But if you struggle with oily skin and getting greasy by the end of the day and you just hate how much you have to touch up and you just hate the look of your skin and how your makeup crumbles on you, if you're a person that has that issue, then this is the powder to buy. This is that powder, it is so good for that reason. So that's why it's definitely on the list. I'm just so glad that I was a fan of Nakia Joy at the time that she created this powder. I still watch her, but I watched her a little bit more when she created the powder. I immediately wanted to purchase it because I know how much she complains about oily skin. And I get oily in my T-zone and I'm like, I gotta try this powder. And it is just the best for locking in your makeup. So it is really, really good. Love this powder, highly recommend it. Those are my top five loose powders with my one honorable mention. Let me know in the comments down below what are your favorite loose powders. I do wanna hear about other face powders that maybe I haven't tried so that I can go check them out. I have a lot of great face powders in my collection, but these are the ones that kind of have risen to the top that I love most. But I would love to hear your thoughts on your favorite face powders. So thank you so much for joining me for today's video. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will respond. And if you've not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button before you leave. So I'll be seeing you guys again very soon in my next video. So until the next time we meet again, this is Savvy signing out.